Hello and welcome on 360 Sports on Trust TV. I am Adeni Ajishafe. Lots to talk about in the world of sport for a weekend. A lot of activities in the CAF uh, Champions League for women. Not forgetting the Qatar 2022 World Cup qualifiers. And you will be playing uh, today and also looking at all the grassroots sports in Nigeria, weightlifting, basketball, and not forgetting tennis. A lot of to talk about uh, on this show as we will be uh, unveiling Ibrahim Mohammed. Ibrahim, good to have you in the studio joining us. Thanks for having me on the show. Mm, good one there. We'll be talking sports together uh, this hour. For you out there to enjoy some juicy side of uh, sporting stories that I'll be bringing to you. Now, we will be kickstarting from uh, just uh, recently, uh, some three or two days ago, the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sport, the Minister of Youth and Sport, uh, uh, did want something very good for Nigerian football by inaugurating 10, uh, 16 man. Uh, committee on a 10-year master plan for Nigerian football and that 10-year master plan for Nigerian football development is uh, something that a lot of people are waiting to see what are going to are they going to come up with the committee set up that committee is going to be chaired by Alaji Ibrahim Galadima supported by Yemi Dogu as a vice while the likes of uh, Chief Shegun Degbami, uh, Sunday Ulisse, Imanu Babayaro are all parts of that committee. 16-man committee to draw a plan for Nigeria, 10-year football plan at least. Our football uh, needs to be developed and we just have to talk about it this morning, talking about this particular uh, 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 event. Now, Ibrahim, we look at Nigerian football, although we have other sports, this is for football now. 10-year plan, a master plan development, 16-man committee, although one person opted out, that is a Justice Amesia Maka Adokie uh, opted out, but the 16 of them, the likes of uh, Honore Bayo Midiron, who has been uh, a, a, one of the vocal uh, women in the world of women football, and also we have a lot of Nigerians, Ulisse, Babayaro, Odegbami, Galadima, Idowu, a lot of them, in fact, Adeo J. Kere, a sport journalist, a veteran sport journalist, also part of the committee, to see what they can come up with concerning 10-year plan for Nigerian football, in a master plan way. Mm. What can you say about this? Well, the, the thing is, Ni, the problem with us in Nigeria most times is not really the conception of the ideas. I mean, like a 10-year master plan for football is fantastic when you look at it on paper. And when you look at the committee that's set up, it's yeah, just like you mentioned, you ruled out names of people that have been associated with football and sports and development in Nigeria for a very long time. It looks amazing. But it's our follow-through is the problem. Now this committee will probably sit down, bring out this master plan, and we'll look at it and we'll say, okay, fine, this is beautiful, and then we'll keep it there and keep looking at it. You understand? Before you know what's happening, the 10 years has elapsed, and we'll start thinking of concocting another 10-year ma ten ten master plan. You understand? So I think it is a noble idea. However, if we can be able to follow through, all right? If this committee comes, makes its investigations, gives its recommendations, draws out this master plan, let's try and have a plan of implementation. You understand how we can be able to put this thing together to the letter to get where we need to get. Because uh, as it is right now, a lot of people are looking at, oh, it should be much work and less talk. Exactly. Uh, let's see how this master plan, uh, according to the minister, I said the, the committee will work. Uh, uh, the, while the NFF are doing their thing, the committee will also do their thing. So everything will work. They will meet at the middle for Nigerian football to grow. Now, I look at grassroots sport development, uh, aside football, a lot of sports who need this kind of master plan. All the sports in Nigeria need this. Yes. Um, I was actually get, go, getting to that. What, what I think what we need is, is a sports master plan. You understand? Not, not, just, not football. just football. You know, because um, in, in Nigeria we have to we have to accept this. In Nigeria, when we talk sports, the first thing we, we our mind goes to is, is football. You understand? But there are lots of sports out there that we can that we can make real progress on. You understand? If you look at it, um, we had sports before that we were we were sort of like uh, coming up in like we were on the verge of becoming powerhouses i mean like our first gold medal in the olympic games came in through through jump, long, long long jump. jump. You understand? what have we done after that 
to when develop you, to that develop sport. To develop that particular sport. You understand? What have we done after that? We used to be fantastic in the sprints. Where, hey, where are we now? You know, uh, we, we're, not, we're not going into other field events. We're not, we're not doing javelin. We're not doing you know, discus, discus, uh, short hammer, put. short put. You don't find us there. We used to be great at weightlifting. Weightlifting used to be a, a, a very strong point for us, but now it's, not, it's no longer there. You understand? Not to talk of areas that we haven't even explored, like gymnastics, swimming, and all, and, and, and all that. And we have these talented people that can actually do these things. We have the human capital to develop this thing, but we, 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 do, we lack a plan. And we lack the commitment to follow through with these plans. Mm. That is our problem. You understand? So maybe we should start thinking about having a sports master plan rather than just football. a football master plan or, or developing these master plans in silos. Mm. Okay? Having a football master plan, then we'll have one for athletics, we'll have another one for swimming. Let it just be let total just package. Be, let it be the total package. You understand? Get the people that are involved with these various sports, put them all in a mixer. You understand? And then you grind out something fantastic for Nigerian sports entirely. I think that is, should be the way to go. That should be the way to go. According to Ibrahim Mohamed, that instead of having football master plan alone, why don't we make it a total package by involving other sports uh, in Nigeria? Because, uh, like he said, there was a time where a powerhouse in sprinting, the likes of Miriam Yali, Lisson De Bada, uh, Chilma Juwa, all of them did well through sprinting, through athletics, long jump, high jump, uh, discourse, short put, not forgetting a lot of Nigerians doing handball, volleyball, basketball, weightlifting, gymnastics, a lot of talent in this country. We just have to create the master plan for all this sport whereby we can harness all these sports and make Nigerians great again instead of focusing on football alone. Yes, football is the beautiful bride that everyone wants to uh, get married to, but really, we just have to let other sports have their own phase of life. Coming from Ibrahim Mohamed there. Now let's uh, uh, digress a bit. Let's talk about something else. We've been uh, talking, hammering on uh, uh, other sports development. And now, during the week, the IGP, Inspector General of Police Weightlifting Championship, began and it has ended yesterday on Friday at the package B of the MQ Abiola Stadium. The weightlifting saw a lot of uh, weightlifters from different uh, location from Nigeria, from the FRSC, Nigerian police, uh, all the other states involved, they all came and they saw and they conquered. Uh, their IGP weightlifting actually was an eye-opener to discover a lot of talent in the world of weightlifting. Weightlifting is a sport that Nigeria can really go into and t the country will really do well in that sport. Now we have uh, on the screen there, let's allow that particular, uh, that, that particular uh, clip to at least roll for you to enjoy. Thank you. 
Good one there. I just saw the first edition of the IGP weightlifting competition that took place at the package B of the MK Wabiola Stadium. As you said, that Nigerian can harness weightlifting and uh, make uh, that sport great again. Now, looking at this, uh, Ibrahim, you just saw there what the weightlifter did. They've been there for like three days and now it has ended yesterday. But the good thing is that that event was a platform for weightlifters from different area, uh, states or uh, uh, paramilitary that came together and military to just compete mm. and you saw there what they did. Mm. Just like we mentioned earlier, we, we, talent is not our problem. Mm. It's, it's, it's harnessing that talent that is, that is the issue. So in as much as this is a fantastic idea, you gather these people, they go, they do a tournament and, 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 and it's all fine. It's all smiles and hugs and pats, and the, pats on the back. But what happens after that? When they go back to various places they're from, do they have a training plan? Do they have, uh, do, 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 do have any incentive to keep going? Mm -hmm. You understand? Why, um, why I'm bringing these things up is sometimes it, it, um, it baffles you when you see Nigerian athletes going to other countries to represent them in sports and do f very well. Very well. They do very well when they go to these places and, 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 they, and they compete for these countries. You understand? So that's why I'm bringing this up. You know, what happens after this tournament? Mm -hmm. Yes, medals were handed out. Everybody was happy. We had a good time. And, we, and, and, and it's something to look forward to, right? But what happens after that? This is not the first time we are, we are probably having tournaments like this. You know, just like we mentioned earlier, we were used to be great at weightlifting, both male and female. We were, we were, we were doing it, you know. But mm -hmm. there, there, there was a, a gradual regression, and and when we're nowhere to be found mm -hmm. now. You understand? We used to we used to clear out in, in these kind of things. But at least um, it is a step in the right direction, I think. Um, if we can be able to promote these kind of tournaments and to be able to harness the talents that we have and bring new people to the fore, uh, I just pray that the people that we discover will not later go and start lifting for Spain, Argentina, and Germany, uh, Germany and England mm -hmm. and other countries like that. I mean, like, it will really break our hearts if, if that happens. Now, you look at just what you have said, uh, I remember when Francis Obikwelu was racing for Nigeria yeah, he before he moved to Portugal. To Portugal. Exactly. He did well. Yes. Gloria Alozi did well she moving to Spain. to Spain. Now, there's a lady that's now running for Bahrain, mm -hmm. Nasser. She was here uh, struggling. But by the time she moved to Bahrain to compete for them, mm -hmm. everything was offered. And she's fine. And you have a lot of, there's a particular table tennis player that plays for, uh, I think, Mozambique or there about, Nigerian. Mm -hmm. He's doing well for that country. Mm -hmm. So, what, like you said, after this tournament, after this event or competition, what's next? What do we do? Mm -hmm. Do we just clap, compete, give medals, and then that's the end? Mm -hmm. We do another one next year. We do another one in Lagos, Abuja, Portacourt. What are we doing to give these athletes a good platform? where they can become somebody through that particular sport for Nigeria, mm. for themselves, and also for their families. Mm. Because whatever they earn, whatever they get, okay, if they are young, you can give them scholarship. Let there be that template there. Let them go get scholarship to go to school. Mm. If they are matured enough to get the cash reward, give it to them. Not the one that uh, athletes will go for competition, finish it, and then you'll be hearing that they are here to be paid six months, one year, two years. Like the case of the Tigers, the Tigers. In basketball mm. the issue of dollars now becoming a big issue for, Nigeria, for, for that uh, those teams mm. so it's not supposed to be like that we are supposed to run everything the way we love the Oibo style that exactly. they are doing right yes, exactly exactly because they are going out there for something that they can't get here mm. and it's not something that we can't give them it's very simple sometimes most of these athletes train themselves they train on their own all they need is just a little bit of follow. Let's cast our minds back to what happened in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. There was this debacle about doping and not taking tests and what not what. These federations, these sports federations, are supposed to check in with these athletes. Have you done this test? You are due for this test. Have After all, email was sent. Exactly. How have you done this test? If you have done it, okay, what's the result? They need to have had these pieces of information before we start going to major tournaments and, uh, and uh, uh, embarrassing ourselves, you know, when it comes to things like that. So, so it's, 
you just need to be checking in with these athletes. Find your training yourself. Give them a little bit of incentive so that I can keep on training myself, you know? And let me know that I have, I have, something, I have something to play for, you know? Yes, we talk about national pride and all these things and we carry the Nigerian flag and we're happy and we're shouting, but still, something's got to give. I can't go out there and give my best if I'm hungry. I can't go out there and give my best if I'm sick, you know? And if they are injured, that's another issue entirely. Nobody looks at them. You They're understand? forgotten. You're forgotten. You go, you treat yourself. It's when you come back, that is when they'll start working fine. Oh, this guy is back, so let's see how we can be able to get him to this tournament or that tournament. I mean, like, even with the Eagles, you talked about money. Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, but even with the Eagles, it was a serious issue back then. You know, match the bonuses not being paid, um, air tickets not being... Coaches being all paid, salaries, like salaries for... Salaries for, 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 for lots of months, mm -hmm. you understand? And the problem is, it is still a recurring issue. These are issues that still come back. Okay, it might not go to football. Right now we're talking about basketball. It might go to handball. You might go to volleyball. All these things happen and they are recurring issues. What mm. are we doing to stop these things? If we do not be, if we do not take steps to manage these situations, believe you me, all our good athletes will be going out to play and represent Compete other countries. Other, for other countries. Exactly. You'll mm. see an Adeye me playing for Germany. You understand? You have somebody called Denjuma playing in for Netherlands. Netherlands. You know, these are Nigerian boys that could have come here and done this thing for us. But because of one thing or the other, we find out it's only when they get rejected. Then, then, they, then they come back. You understand? I'm hearing um, Ademola Lukman is looking to make a comeback, comeback to, to Nigeria. Nigeria. You know, after he went to England and played for the under-17. So now he's not getting a chance in the senior team. He's saying he's going to come back to Nigeria. You see? so it, and, and we'll bring him back, most likely. We will it have will, him it back. Will, uh, of sure, exactly. Of, of we, will, we will have him. You understand? So, so, so that is the problem. Unless we fix what happens at home, these boys will keep on going out and will keep on saying their DMEs, the Njumas, the Lukmans, playing for other countries. It's also that we do leads right in this country, Nigeria. We have all it takes uh, to run sports as a big business. We have all it takes to make that particular sector a sector that is very viable, that can change this country. A lot of unemployment that we're talking about today, sport can reduce it. If we really, why can't we just do the right thing? Well, that's another question for another day. Now, let's move away from uh, weightlifting. Let's talk about uh, uh, the Premier League Super 8 uh, started. It has started yesterday where teams have started playing, teams like uh, 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 Quara Falcons, uh, Cano Pillars, uh, Customs, they all came out. Uh, Cano Pillars, have, they, are, they are a good run because uh, it was a walkover against Lagos Islanders at the MQ Abiola Stadium, package B also, in uh, the indoor sport hall, uh, as it went down. And you also have uh, uh, the team called Customs winning their encounter 76-73 against Quara Falcons. We have something from, for you from that angle of sport. Mm, good one there. Something for you from the basketball scene. The Premier League Super 8 basketball final. Eight teams have participated, although Lagos Islanders. Uh, did not play yesterday due to the fact that they were not visible. And Kano Pillars had a good one there, our coach uh, uh, Sonny Ahmed celebrating. And he's, he also wants his lads to perform better. Uh, he would have loved to play so that he can fine tune his team, uh, team rather, according to Coach Sonny Ahmed. And also, Coach Bri Baba of Quara Falcons, uh, he wasn't happy for the fact that his team led the, uh, almost all the four quarters before 
uh, customs that's be, uh, this, that is coached by Scott's energy were able to assign them like three extra three points, 76, 70, uh, six, uh, 76, 73 in that particular encounter. This is basketball we are talking about. Uh, now, we just have we saw a clip there where Cora Falcons uh, faced the uh, customs of uh, uh, customs team. And you, 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 this is a platform for basketballers also to showcase their talent. And in fact, the joy of playing basketball after a long time, postponement, MBBF issue and all that, mm -hmm. eventually a four-man committee was set up to see that this particular event will see the light of the day for it. Let's have a winner mm -hmm. of the league. Let the eight teams come, four from Atlantic Conference, from the Southern part, four from Savannah Conference, from the Northern side, and then come together and let's play basketball. Mm -hmm. And these guys are happy. Yes, um, definitely as an athlete, you want to play, whether you're a footballer, basketballer, runner, you want to play. And you want to play competitively, you understand? Playing competitively is quite different from playing in your backyard, you know? But when you have competitive things like this, it gives us the opportunity, just like you mentioned, to actually um, harness the potentials that we have, get to see the people in action. When they're in competitive action, that's when you get to select and make informed decisions about athletes that are doing well, those that are not, those that we can pick for national assignments, and those we cannot, you understand? And this gives us an opportunity to actually view, just like you said, from the two conferences. These are the best from the two conferences that we have, you know, so that they could be, all be in one place, and we can be able to look at them and see um, uh, how, how, how it has grown. Yeah, basketball is, 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 is a sport that I think we have the potential to do very well in, you understand? We have lots and lots of natural talent when it comes to basketball and i think things like this when we have things like this going on on a regular we can be able to 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 get where we need to get mm -hmm. with sports like this especially basketball that we're talking about hopefully nigeria can just get it right uh the basketballers will still be there they will be playing the, all these seven teams they will play till uh they will continue to play till 16th when the final I will come up over there at the MQ Abiola Stadium where the Super 8 Premier League is ongoing. Now we leave basketball, we talk about tennis. The VEM Tennis Open Championship is taking place also in Abuja at the stadium where a lot of tennis stars, Joseph Ime, Mohamed uh, Musa, not forgetting Mary Love Edwards, uh, Noah Yegbusi, all of them are there. Uh, they have played the double. They play now the finals will be coming up today uh, for the men and women singles. And the good thing is that these talented Nigerians in the world of tennis will be able to also showcase their talent. I love the fact that we have a lot of templates or platforms for these athletes to compete now, but we just have to take good care of them. We just have to, uh, although we know that a lot of uh, uh, co co organizations, corporate bodies are coming up, uh, supporting uh, such uh, sports. Mm -hmm. Attention is already on football, but now uh, we are beginning to see that, okay, this particular organization will sponsor tennis. This uh, IGP just uh, sub work hand in hand with Nigerian Weightlifting Federation to give us uh, weightlifting. We just saw basketball now organized by Federal Ministry of Youth and Sport. At least we are having it. Uh, these are these are platform for all the other sports to thrive in Nigeria. Yes, I mean, like when we have um, tournaments like this being sponsored by uh, maybe government agencies and ministries and whatnot. Or corporate like, bodies. Corporate bodies, yes. The, the, um, the, the government agencies first. Mm -hmm. They give us the opportunity or they give those corporate bodies the opportunity to examine and find out that these sports are actually gold mines that they can tap into. You understand? Running sports, you can't run sports on government money alone. You, you can't. It's, it's just a fact. You understand? You need people from other parts to invest in these things to mm -hmm. make it work. Corporate bodies need to come in and they need to find out, that they need to understand that this is something that they can tap into, put in their money. And yes, they might get returns, they might not get returns, but they can be able to use that to perform their corporate social responsibility and then the nation is the better for it. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I like to see fora like this where we, where, we, where we explore other sports, not just football. You understand? Tennis has long been uh, set to the back burner. Yes, we do, we, we do table tennis, but lawn tennis is something that we haven't really looked at. It's only recently that um, we have um, tennis players coming up right now trying to, trying to make some headway. So it's something that we, we, we need to look at. And uh, tournaments like this, I think, will uh, step in the right direction. If, if we can have a follow-through plan to be able to 
keep in track of these players, you know, uh, nurture them, develop them, and hopefully we'll be able to do something in tennis very soon. Very soon, we hope that Nigeria and tennis players can become another set of Serena Williams, Andy Murray, and the Rafa uh, Nadal of this world. We can announce that sport, we can do it, it is uh, very doable. Now we move away from tennis, let's talk about the uh, CAF Women Champions League, so painful, Rivers Angels, when all Nigerians were thinking they would be able to do exploit, well, a lot of things went wrong, and now they will be coming back to Nigeria as they've been bundled out of the tournament. They won their last game against Bihiga, although on a very good, on a good note, 4-0, for 0 for uh, Mary Koku scoring, and also the fact that they were able to win 4 0 but it wasn't good enough because it was late before they realized themselves. They lost the first two matches, 3-0, 1-0 against uh, uh, Axfa and also Mamelodi Sona of South Africa. But now our ladies are coming back home. So painful. When the uh, coach Edino Cole and then the entire team were like, okay, we're going to leave this trophy. In fact, if we judge Nigerian football for the antecedent we've shown in African football, we are supposed to be the winner, the first winner. This is the first edition, the maiden of the CAF Women Champions League. But right now, we are coming back home. Asakas of Ghana, they are still there. Malabo Queens are there. Asfa of Morocco and also have Mamelodi Sundowns. Those are the four teams that will be playing the semi-finals of this CAF Champions League, the maiden edition. Well, that's football. Yes, that is football. And, um, well, our hearts have been broken. Um, we had high hopes, just like you said, for, for Rivers Angels. I had uh, occasion to, to actually um, get a glimpse of um, their match with Sundowns. They, they gave a very good account of themselves and they, they lost narrowly, you understand. Under controversial circumstances, you might say, but let's not talk about that, mm -hmm. you understand. They gave a very good account of themselves, especially in that match, they lost very narrowly. If they had gotten something out of that match, most likely it People would have qualified for ex semi Exactly, with the, with, the, with the win that they got um, at the end of the day. But let's hope that um, they use this as a platform to come back stronger and better next year so mm. that we can, we can all gather and, and, and celebrate uh, women football once again in Nigeria. Hopefully, we can uh, hope for another time. We are, the rivers years are out now. Next year, hopefully, a team from Nigeria should be able to go out there and scoop it. Now we move away from that angle of uh, football reporting. Let's talk about uh, Super Eagles. Uh, well, Qatar 2022 World Cup qualifier all around the globe now in the CONCACAF, Comball, uh, Africa here, Asia. All the fixtures are coming up. A lot of matches, a lot of games. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, uh, in fact, there are so many matches this weekend. Uh, uh, FIFA is uh, looking at UEFA qualification, first round group E, Belgium, Estonia, Wales, Belarus, uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina against Milan. You just have all these, all these uh, fixtures coming up. Some have been played, some will be played. But I think our attention should be on Super Eagles. Super Eagles on Nigeria will be playing, will be playing against uh, Li uh, Liberia. They call them Lone Stars. I hope they will be lonely on that pitch today so that the Eagles can fly. Uh, while the while the fixtures are rolling on the screen, while we talk about Nigerian Super Eagles, uh, Ibrahim, Super Eagles of Nigeria, mm. uh, a lot of Nigerians look at them as, oh, today you just have to fly. Ahmed Musa said they just have to fly. Yes, you see the problem with um, the, the, the Super Eagles, mm -hmm. um, also, most especially recently, they're a mixed bag. You don't know which, which of the Eagles are, are, are turning up. <laughs> you know, you can get uh, the, 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 the Super Eagles that played against Capo Verde, fantastic, and then you can get the ones that played against CAR. You, uh, you understand? So you, you're not really sure which ones you have, which, which, which ones are going to turn up. But we hope that the real Eagles actually get to show up now and play against Liberia. Let's, let's get this done, mm -hmm. you know? Let's wrap this up as, as, as soon as we can so that we can, we, we, we can have the peace of mind to know that we've actually done this, you know? Mm -hmm. Other nations are, are, are doing it. You have uh, some, actually got some very great results yesterday, the day before that, and uh, they're moving in the right direction. As you speak right now, Brazil, Germany, they've actually qualified. They've actually qualified. Algeria, South Africa on the verge yeah. of qualifying. Senegal too did well. Now Nigeria are playing against Liberia today yeah. over there in Morocco. Do you see us winning convincingly? Well, I see us winning. Whether well, it's convincing, well, well, whether it's convincing <laughs> or, or well, not, it's, it's it, yes. Uh, but I see us winning. I mean, like, all these, all our matches, if you look at the group entirely, it is a winnable group on paper. You understand? 
I didn't expect us to, to take this long before wrapping it up. You understand? On paper, that is, that is. So I do see us winning. It is, it is a winnable match. It's a winnable mm -hmm. game. And, and it's being played in on neutral ground. So um, I heard um, somebody um, talking earlier that um, um, had it been we were going to Liberia, it would have been a different case entirely because our players are not used to playing on those kind of pitches. You understand? But the pitch in Morocco will actually um, um, serve our, our players better because they're used to playing on those kind of surfaces. So um, it could be our, to our advantage. Uh, maybe Liberia being there with no pressure, they might, it might be to their own advantage. So, but well, I see us winning. Convincingly, not so much, but I do see us winning. Do you see Gallo at least topping the strike force today? Yes, I, I would, I would, um, I would, I would love to see that. I, I would love to see that. You know, um, football has has evolved a lot, um, most especially recently, where we're used to uh, playing with a, a certain a, a certain quality, or people players with certain quality. You understand? Now the era of the typical number nine is. Uh, is easy now. Exactly. You haven't been playing people false nine and what not what and, mm. and revolving threes in the front. Um, but I, I, I'm a purist. You understand? I believe you need that target man. You need that big, burly striker, especially if you're playing in Africa. You know? Where, where there's somebody where, out there where, that they will all be looking at exactly. while others can can, can, you can work, the, you can play From around. the wings, yeah. You can play around. You know, we, we when, uh, back in the days of Rashidi Akili, that was what was happening. Everybody was focused on him. On, on him. Exactly. While then you had Amokachi, Finiti, Amunike. Amunike. They were coming in from the side and, and, and doing Jesus all sorts is. of damage. You understand? So I think we can still do that, especially on the African continent where it's more physical. You know, you need that physical presence up front to occupy the center backs so that the other players can come into play. We have very quick players. You know, we have players that are very quick, very fast. Cine, you know, they, 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 they can actually do fantastic, doing wonderfully for Napoli. You understand? I, 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 those are the kind of players that I, we actually need. So maybe me, not an Igalo. Maybe Simon can actually do the job as well because um, they have almost the same physical features. And um, Simon is actually younger. So we can have that, play with that typical number nine, have a focal point for the attack so that the other players can come in to do their thing. You mm -hmm. understand? And of course, you know that having a number nine there, when he gets the chance, he will do the Dunk business. Goals. Exactly. Now, we're hoping the Nigerian Super Eagles, uh, we don't want to dwell much on that because we're just waiting for them to win. All we need is a win. And also, we played against Cape Verde on Tuesday. It's today and Tuesday, Nigerian played against Cape Verde and also Liberia. Blue Waves, Lone Stars, Eagles must fly. That's just the mentality. According to the captain of the team, the skipper, uh, Ahmed Musa saying that Nigerian Eagles will fly. Nigerian should rest assured that they will do everything possible to lift that particular winning for Nigeria today and also on Tuesday. Hopefully, they will stand by their words and make us happy, not giving us high blood pressure. Now, we move away from them, talk about uh, some uh, stories trending in the world of football, like transfer gossip. Before we come back, so uh, talk about uh, the Super Eagles again. Now, we look at Manchester City are willing to sell. They are willing to sell Raheem Sterling. And uh, news coming out that Barcelona would not uh, mind uh, buying this very good uh, uh, player. Uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, Raheem Sterling, mm -hmm. for the five million pounds as the amount that Manchester City mm -hmm. are raring to at least get from this player's sale, if Barcelona are really ready to do business. Yes. Um, well, let me apologize to Barcelona fans for what I'm about to say. <laughs> it's not that if you're willing to buy Raheem Sterling. Mm. Are you able to buy Raheem Sterling? Mm. We all know the kind of financial situation Barcelona yeah, is right now. Right now. Although exactly. they said they said because they will be doing that on, they will take it to be like a loan. Mm. One because they are looking at Sterling and Danny Olmo. Olmo plays for RB Leipzig, Leipzig yeah. so they are considering okay, let's use loan first. Because of the financial crisis and also avoiding the issue of uh, financial, uh, sorry, fair play. Also, you have to be very careful. But even if it is a loan, sooner or later it will have to appear on the books. Mm. No matter how far you push it, it will have to appear on the of books. Of course. Yes. So, of course, Raheem Sterling is a fantastic player. Barcelona would like to get Raheem Sterling on their books. But can they afford to do that? Mm. You understand? Um, with the, the, the fact that he's leaving, um, he was considering leaving Manchester City, I think. At this particular point in his career, that's something that he probably needs. 
You yeah. understand? The arrival of Jack Grealish has made things a lot difficult for him. You know, it was difficult before because you have, there's a plethora of wingers in Manchester City. You know, even Jesus now has been moved to the wing. He's not even the, he's could, no longer, he's he's no longer in this, uh, at the, the focal point of the attack. He has been moved to the wing now. It's only people like Ferran Torres when he is fit. That's when they, they, they put him down the middle. You understand? So the wings are overcrowded. So I think that is the problem Raheem Sterling. The next thing for Sterling right is just to move. Take his opportunity and move elsewhere. You understand? Where he moves, that is the issue. You understand? Um, Barcelona could be a good fit, but can they? Mm, affording that is the question mm, can barcelona afford the uh, rahim stalin's uh, uh <laughs> but talking about his price 45 million pounds looking at the financial crisis facing that club right now in fact the coach they sacked they are yet to settle him he said he wants his money paid in full and they want to say, pay, pay him in half well that's football now we look at a nigerian his name is wilfred indili wilfred indili has been so fantastic for leicester city that clubs like manchester united Real Madrid uh, are really uh, rearing to go to see how they can buy this very good player. Well, news came out that Real wants him. Manchester United was three days ago. Now it is Real Madrid for Wilfred in Didi. Right now, you can't rate him as the best Nigerian player in Europe. Right? Yes. You will not be remiss if you do that. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing about Ndidi that I keep telling people is, is uh, consistency. Once you're consistent, once, once you play on the regular, you understand? That is what, that what brings out the best in you. I think that is why we're considering Ndidi as one of the best players that we have. Because he's one of the most consistent. There's no Leicester team sheet with a fit Ndidi that you'll not see him there if he's fit. You understand? He plays. Whenever he's fit, he plays. Earlier we talked about the era of the typical number nine fading, fading out. You understand? But now we've seen the rise of a different kind of player. A different kind of midfielder not the creative one now because the number 10 is also sparsely used now in a lot of formations now we're seeing the era of the central midfielder you understand somebody that can play that makelele position you understand and those are the people in the mold of wilfred indeed that's why he will be in high demand you know that was why real madrid was willing to splash the cash on some, someone like kamavinga because he can actually play in that position you know young big, strong boy that can actually do the box-to-box -box work. Mm. So, NDD falls un under that mold. You understand? Strong lad, very strong runner, can tackle very well. And Consistent. He's, exactly. And he's not afraid to do the dirty work. You know? When you need a tackle to be put in, he put gets it, it. Yes. You understand? He gets it in. He's not afraid to get stuck in to do the job. So, in that player, you have a player you know that is committed, that can actually do the job for you, act on a regular basis good you one. understand so so him we considering him as one of the best players or even the best player nigeria has right now we will not give him a if we do that Wilfred friend indeed they really deserve moving to a bigger club he has been so consistent with leicester city and we go to in fact the last three on the law talking about daniel alves alves a former player of barcelona now he's coming back Yes, coming home back to Rose because Serbi, his former teammate, is back now as the manager of that team. And then I bet himself for Barcelona come by. In fact, it's being celebrated. And right, I can tell you that he's back because verbal everything has been agreed for this man, the Brazilian, who has moved around, won a lot of trophies for himself, and now he's coming back to help his former teammates. Yes. Um, once again, let me apologize to Barcelona, Barcelona. fans. <laughs> <laughs> you keep apologizing for, for, for what I'm about, for what I'm about to say. Okay, don't worry. Um, Maybe Barcelona will, will, will play Tottenham will score. <laughs> yeah. um, this just goes to show the kind of situation Barcelona are in right now. Barcelona used to be the kind of club that attracts the top talent. You know, you used to have people who can pay to pay for Barcelona, open to play for Barcelona, you know, um, but um, when, you, when you find them going for um, Danny Alves at this particular period, it goes to show that um, something's not working, you know. Yes, I understand what Xavi is trying to do. Xavi is trying to, he's trying to get back to his comfort zone. 
you understand, um, get people that he knows in and around him so that he can work together with them and maybe work that kind of magic that he used to have before. But in a sporting, uh, in a sporting sense, I really don't see Danny Alves doing what Barcelona fans expect him to do right now. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes, he'll make up the numbers, um, probably get one or two assists, and um, he will do well to, 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 to bring up the level of the other players around him in, on a psychological level, on a mental level, you know? But sporting-wise, I, I really don't see it um, as a good move from, from my own position. I would like to be proven wrong, mm. but for the sake of my Barcelona friends. You yeah, understand? I'd like to be proven wrong. You are, now you are getting out for that. You want to attack me. <laughs> <laughs> Barcelona. Well, that's football, you know. Before we go, let's uh, come back to talk about Super Eagles. You said you want them to win, either convincingly or not. not. What are you looking at? Is it 1-0 or 2-1 or 3-0 or whatever? What's the... Well, I'm not really a prediction kind of person, but if yeah. you're going to put me on the spot, I will take a 1-0. A 1-0? Yes, I'll take a, I'll take a 1-0. Um, was it Osim. Yes. <laughs> Yesterday, someone let's said Igalo. Uh, now you say you picked Osim. Yes. Let's okay, let's maybe Osime. he's going to be the goalkeeper. Matuka Okoye, mm. that was just... <laughs> I don't care if, it is, if it's the referee that's going one to score nil. for us. Let's go. Let's just score and get the 1-0 and come home. Good one. Coming from uh, Ibrahim Mohamed, who has been with us in the studio to talk about uh, sports this morning on 360 Sports, where we're giving you a review of things that happened already the week and also adding some spice of our uh, sports on the show we've been talking about nigerian super eagles we talk with lifting tennis basketball the super eight is on and also not forgetting the fact that nigeria will be playing against a uh, lone star south liberia today over there in morocco wishing them all the best that they should win that game while they'll be facing the Kivat team blue whale on tuesday we're also hoping that they will be able to silence them and talk that group before they face the final phase Ibrahim, good to have you in the studio. Thank you very much for having me on the show. It's been my pleasure. Good one there. And as we say every time, that sport is business and fitness. Keep doing it. I am Adeni Ajishafir. Thanks for watching.